studying a main topic in statistics called inference. There are two types of inference we'll be doing. The first is confidence intervals. The second is significance tests. Chapter 19 deals specifically with confidence intervals for proportions. So I'm going to give you a little bit. I'm going to start off with what a confidence interval looks like. We'll kind of look at an example and how you interpret that. So a confidence interval is going to involve a statistic or an estimate plus or minus a margin of error. And that doesn't mean that you've done something wrong um, when you don't, like we think of error. It's just that we have um, sampling variability. So we come up with some statistic, and in this case, first we'll be dealing with um, p hat, but we come up with a statistic, plus or minus, and this margin of error is made up of two parts, something called a critical value, and then we'll multiply that by the standard deviation of the statistic. Okay, so what that looks like in symbols for, for proportions, our statistic is going to be p hat, plus or minus. The critical value, we use the symbol z star, where z stands for our standard normal value. So we have um, like z scores. So we have a z star value times. And then for the standard deviation of the statistic, we use something called the standard error. So we use that se for standard error of our p hat value. So the standard error to calculate that it's just the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. Now this critical value depends on the confidence interval or confidence level. So if for the confidence level, sometimes you'll hear, um, hear a, a, something said where it's a 95% confidence level. And if it's 95% confidence, then our Z star value is 1.96. Another common confidence level is 90%. And for that, a Z star value is 1.645. And another common one is a 99% confidence level. And for that case, Z star would be 2.5. Seven six, and I'll show you where these values are located on our chart. So we're, I want to give you a little bit of an example of when we would do something like this. Um, a very common place where we can get some very good um, types of data is Gallup polls. And so one of the things that Gallup does actually very um, weekly is to gather information about the presidential approval rate. So this is from February 20th, this report was made, and talks about how Trump's approval rate is says steady at 49%, and talks a little bit about um, the trends. You can look and you can see actual trends of um, the presidential approval ratings. Um, gives a little bit of information, talks, splits it up between Republicans, independents, and Democrats, and you can kind of see that. Talks about how um, this particular report talks about how um, different people who were surveyed are whether or not they're satisfied with the way the nation's going. Um, so we can see all this information. And I wanted to show you um, this part here because I find this interesting where it talks about you can view complete question responses and trends. And that's a separate document. So let me just kind of show you this. And this goes through, and this is all this data, and this is what they do. They'll call and they'll ask, do you approve or disapprove of the way Donald Trump is handling his job as president? 
And the question is always the same. So when they go through and ask the question, it's always the same so that they can make sure that they don't have any kinds of boarding bias. So um, here you see from the latest one, February 3rd to the 16th, when they were gathering data, and you can see the 49% um, said they approve, 48% say they disapprove, and then 3% said no opinion. And you can kind of see how it has, it has changed and um, how there's a trend of it going up. And you can you know, kind of scroll down and see all this information. And if you continue to scroll down, this is a, a pretty lengthy um, document, and it has some other information as well that I thought was interesting, um, talking about, uh, well, it breaks it down by gender, race, age, education. So it will kind of break down the presidential approval ratings by all those different things. Um, talks about the most important problem you think is um, is in our nation and goes through and gives percentages broken down. So there is just a ton of different questions that you can ask and, and investigate and look at when you're do, you know, looking at Gallup poll information. But one of the other things that's very important is this part right here that says survey methods. So when you click on that, you see where it tells you how they gather their data. So telephone interviews, when they tell you when, with a random sample, we know that's important, of 1,028 adults age 18 and older living in all 50 United U.S. states. So it gives you this information. And notice here it says there's the margin of sampling error. So remember what I told you, there's a margin of error. It says it's plus or minus four percentage points at the 95% confidence level. So it's giving you this information um, of how they gather the data. So we're going to take a look at how we can use something like this to, um, to create a, a, to create a um, confidence interval for the proportion of people who say they approve of President Trump. Okay, so from that Gallup poll, 49% of Americans surveyed approve of the way Donald Trump is handling his job as president. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a 95% confidence interval. So we know from the poll that N was 1,028, because that's how many people we were told that they surveyed. And we we're told that the P hat value was 0.49. 49% of the people surveyed approved. So for the 95% confidence interval, and I had given you some values for um, the Z star, so 95% is 1.96, but I want to show you where you can find those. This is on one of your tables um, on your yellow packet, table B, and it's the second page, so you might want to find that. And if you look down at the very last row, you will see some values. It says confidence level C, and notice right here for 95%, and look at the number right above it. For a 95% confidence level, we have 1.96, and that's our Z star value. If it was 99%, you'll see it's 2.576. That was one of the other values I, I gave you. And 90% was 1.645. So that's where you can find those values. So our, our formula for the confidence interval is P hat, which is our statistic, plus or minus our Z star value times the standard error of P hat. So that's what we're building. So our p hat value is 0.49, plus or minus, z star is, um, I should have written that down, so z star was 1.96, times the standard error, which remember was point, which it's p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. So we get 0.49 times 0.51 over 1,028. Okay, so grabbed my calculator, punched those values in, and you see we get, whoops, and it disappeared. Okay, so our lower is 0.4594. And then to 0.5206, if I round 
four decimal places. So, and this is how a confidence interval, how you would write that with parentheses like that. So now we're going to talk about how to interpret a confidence interval. This is what you're going to say. I am 95% confident that the true proportion of American adults who approve of the way Donald Trump is handling his job as president is between 0.4594 and 0.5206. That's how you're going to um, that's how you're going to uh, write out your interpretation of a confidence interval. And really, this is like a fill in the blank. I am blank confident that the true proportion of, and then you're going to be adding whatever your context is here. So all of this that I'm underlining is your context, is between, and then you're going to write in what you got for your confidence level. So everything else is going to be true. You can say for every confidence interval you interpret, you're just going to kind of fill in the blanks so you can make it applicable for your problem. Now, then there's another question, and this other question is, what does 95% confidence mean? All right, and this is what it means. In repeated sampling, of size n, 95% of the confidence intervals created will capture the true mean. Um, sorry, the true proportion. But when we do means, we'll say mean. Okay, so the idea on this, in repeated sampling of size n, 95% of the confidence intervals created will capture the true proportion. We took a sample, we got a p-hat value, and we created our confidence interval around it. If we drew another sample, we would get another confidence interval. It would be a different confidence interval. It wouldn't be the same. If we did a third sample, we would get a different p-hat value and we would have a different confidence interval. Every time we do a sample, we get a different confidence interval. If you looked at all the confidence intervals we created, if we did this over and over again and we looked at multiple confidence intervals, 95% of the confidence intervals we create will capture the true proportion. So there's a lot of ways that you can say this wrong, and but if you say it this way, it will always be right. You need to make sure that when you interpret a confidence interval that you recognize there's nothing really special about the confidence interval you created. It's just one of the confidence intervals you could have come up with based on your sample. So you really want to make sure that these um, interpretations, that you really pay attention to those. Very, they're very picky. 
but it needs to be right. So you want to make sure that you are paying close attention to how you are doing your interpretations, both for your confidence interval and what does 95% confidence mean, or it might be 90% confidence. Now, it shouldn't surprise you that we have conditions. And before we can, and I, I suppose I should have done the conditions first, because normally you would. But in order to do what we just did, we have to make sure that our conditions are met. And the first one is that we want to make sure that we have a random sample. And if it's not random, then it needs to be representative of the population. Because sometimes it's not a random sample, but we can reason that it's representative of the population. Now for our problem, we were told um, that Gallup did a random sample. So it was given. Another condition is our sample needs to be large enough. We've seen that before. And that means n times p hat, not p, but n times p hat has to be greater than or equal to 10. And n times 1 minus p hat has to be greater than or equal to 10. So we're going to take 1,028, because that was n, times 0.49. And if I did my math correct, this is about 504, which clearly is greater than 10. And then we take 1,028 times 1 minus p hat, which is 0.51. And we should get 524, which is also greater than 10. So it's large enough. Our third condition, not too large. So for this, um, we could say that 1,028 is less than 10%. Of American adults. And we do want to make sure that we have um, independent sample, you know, that, that it's independent samples. And since it's random, each person should be independent. And, and that's kind of the reason why we have this 10, you know, you can't exceed 10% of the population. Um, and, and that's an independence issues. So since the conditions are met, we can say that our sampling distribution is approximately normal with a mean of p hat and a, a standard deviation, the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. And that allows us to do what we did with to create our confidence interval. So really this part would come first and you would check your conditions to make sure that you can use this normal model and then to make sure that you can actually create that, um, the confidence interval. I think I'm going to stop this video here and I do want to do some examples from your textbook that will be similar to your homework, but I'm going to do that on a separate video.